How are you today? Today we're going to be making a child's picnic table. A picnic table just for you. Right? <laughs> We're going to focus on materials, what type of materials work really well for these uh, picnic tables, where I like to get those materials, where they seem to be the best, what type of screws I like to use, and how I like to pre-drill everything, and what type of bits, what, and router use, and then sanding, where to sand. And then I'm also going to show you how to level it. So if you put it together and it's out of level, it's all wobbly. I'll show you a quick way, easy way to fix that thing and nobody will even know that you ever had a problem with it. So whenever making a picnic table, you have to start with the materials uh, that work, that seem to work the best. So the material that we're going to be using today is two by threes. These right here, and they come in eight foot lengths. So the structure that I use is out of two by threes. Now, the tabletop and the seat top, I use one by fours. I like to use one by fours. Uh, it makes it almost look like a miniature version of a regular uh, picnic table. So when I'm getting ready for my one by four cuts, uh, I usually use a stop block. So right here, here's my radial arm saw and my outfeed table is over on this side and I use the I usually screw all those things down and it works really good at be, making these repetitive cuts because I need nine, nine one by fours and I cut all my one by fours at 35 and an eighth. So the next step I like to do is round over everything. Round over all the edges. All four edges, I start on the end, and I just work away around it, and then I do all my um, other edges. I do, if, I don't know if you notice this, but when I uh, round it over this side right here, and this side, I always go the opposite direction that you're supposed to go, uh, because if I go against the grain, it has a tendency of blowing the edge out. So I'll go essentially with the cut, which is what you're not supposed to do, but it does a good job when you're doing side grain like that. I'll do a time lapse and show you. So the next thing is I like to pre-drill uh, where they go. I just try to stay along one edge. Five, five sixteenths is right after the quarter mark. Then what I use, I use my, my speedy square. So it's three and about a half. So half of three and a half is an inch and three quarters. Right in between. It is a three sixteenths uh, twist bit. I'll put it Make sure I go all the way through. There you go. Coffee break time. Mm. Nothing like hot coffee on a hot summer day. So rather than measuring and marking every single one, I like to make a little jig. So I made this jig out of Baltic birch. The way this thing works is I take two boards and I stack them together 
such as this, should. So then it should slide in like this. Slide it all the way to the end, and then I can drink. And the next part is building this. So this, when I build these, I build lots of these and then I hang them up. I set up the same stop block. So I use the same stop block for my seats, the one by fours as I do for my two by threes. Cut two 35 inches out of this and then I'm left with a piece There we go. I've got two seats cut. They're both really nice. We're gonna require very little sanding. And then this one, I'll cut it down and then this will work for the top piece. All right, next I'm gonna work on the legs. The legs, you gotta have two legs per, per side piece. So it takes a lot more. And the one that I use, I don't use 22 and a half, I use this you can see that I use 30 31.61.62 this is the what it is on mine shorter than this so 22 and a 16th from the point here to the back cut here I always try to keep one around okay so this is one I keep around and I lock this down to uh, the blade and I use a quick clamp and I just put this down. Okay. So once I got that set, and then I put this one in. So the next thing we're going to be cutting are these things. So first we have to cut it, and they cut at 23 and a quarter that's my distance i keep the same distance i'll set up another stop block and when i cut this because it's straight of course i'm going to be cutting it over here on my craftsman uh radial arm saw So this product right here, so it's 18 and a quarter inches. So. All right, next thing is the miter. So what I like to do is, uh, this is one of my top pieces and I put a miter on the same side of all the pieces time and it took a lot of time so what i do is i just slide this board and i watch this corner right here and as soon as it goes over this line right here i don't know if you could see that as soon as it goes over that line that little yellow line right there this kind of piece right here that's where i cut it so then i just Cut all the miters on all these. I start with the sharp, short ones first, and then I have my long ones just below here, and I'll do the same thing to them too. So here we go. The next process. So I need to find halfway between this board. Again, I don't have a jig for this. I'll do this by hand. So it's 23. So we are X marks the spot right here. And what I'll do is I'll take it over the drill press after I get the other three ready, and then I'll drill a hole through the center of it. This is the, the most difficult process of this, building it. Here's the drilling process. 
Uh, I have my Forstner bit, one inch. My drill press sits on top of my on top of my table. All right, here goes nothing. Then lift it out, clean out the chips. Same kind of thing, just a little bit, clean out the chips. There we go. And there's one. So okay, now comes the assembly process for putting the side pieces. And I built this jig, built it out of two by threes, pieces of one by fours. And here's a piece of plywood in. Pre drill each piece with the three eighths. Uh, Forstner bits are these ones right here. I get these out of Montana. Uh, it's called Jake's. Totally Jake's. They do they have screws, they have fence supplies. They're probably one of the cheaper ones, and I like these screws because of this head. That piece. We'll do this piece. And then this I'm gonna hide up here. So there's my two looking side. Notice how I hid that knot right there. And it sits in there just like that. Can I flip it over? Flip it over. It'll look just like this. Just drill it in. All I'm trying to do, all I'm trying to do is break the surface tension. There we go, it's all sanded, ready to go. I, I rub over the top of all the pieces, make sure there's no sharp edges. This is where everything comes together and you can start assembling things. Now I do mine in a certain way and it's worked for everything just kind of fits together. So I do a lot of work on the front end, that way on the finishing end, the back end, everything just goes super smooth. So whenever I build these, I set up these stop blocks and I put it, try to put it at an edge of a table. So I know this, this is an old door uh, that we took out of a building when we were remodeling it. And so I use this door. I know this, this end is straight, it's square. So I use this and I always put my, the end of it right here on the end. So, and then I forgot to mention, I like to have quick clamps. These blue Irwin quick grips, they work really well. So I do one side. There we go. I had that on the wrong side of that. Got ahead of myself a little bit. All right, the next step is marking this. So I put two screws through here and it catches the inside. My block goes like that. So I'll put two screws right here. And the way I like to do this is I know this board is 18 and a quarter and half of 18 and a quarter. And I like to use a screw for this. So I put this kind of in the center. This tape measure is about an inch wide. So half of 18 and a quarter is gonna be nine and an eight. Just a little bit. There we go. Next thing I do is put this in right here and I just put one screw in and I'll do the bottom one and then I'm sink both of them just like that so now what I do is I lay in all the slats. There we go. So 
I have it all set up. All right, next thing, I'm gonna start putting these in. This is a very important tool. This is my spacer. All right, so from this side out, about four and three eighths. I'm gonna check it on the other side. Four and three eighths it is. I'll take a screw. My trusty impact. Now put that in there like that. Just drive it. And I just do the exact same thing on the other side. And what this does is it keeps all the legs stable. All right, now that I have that done, take these off. Now, I wanna set my center, okay? So I'll set this edge right here. Should be four and three eighths. And I'll just, four and three eighths. One and three eighths, so I'll go seven. Seven and five sixteenths. So I can pivot. So that we're even on on both sides and I'll put a screw in it. And then trying to put a straight line on, I try to keep these screws lined up. So I put my tape essentially down the center like that. I'm pretty close. And then I make a, a dimple at 12. Like so. And I wobble. I always wobble just a little bit, just to open it up a little bit because these are just slightly, the heads of these are just slightly bigger than 3 8 Half inch is too big, but if I wobble a little bit, it has a tendency of just slipping down in there. And then I'll sink these two screws. is this bit is just just barely big enough so there we go so I just get it right there and then just start spinning what I do is put my other slats in these are all ready Here's my spacer board, set that right there, slide that in, and I just use my fingers to line it all up. And there we have it, one picnic table. It's got the hole. The next part of this thing, is I need to take it off the table and I set it on a flat piece of concrete. So here we are. Now I'm checking for level. So I got it on the concrete floor and it's at a level. So right here, it's moving up and down. So this corner right here is too long and the opposite corner is too long. Now it's, it's a good, if I lift it up, it's a good about a half an inch too high. So what I do, take a pencil, a carpenter's pencil, turn it on its side, I make a mark. Now I'm gonna cut that with circular. I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. On this side of the line, I'm gonna cut this off right here. Then I'm gonna test it and make sure it's gonna work. There we go. So I'm just gonna cut this off and then we'll test. It's just a little bit more, so we're going to just cut a little bit off the other side. Look at that, perfectly level. You can't move it anywhere. Nice and solid. I try to put all my weight on all the boards, especially if there's a knot. Right here, there's a knot.
Any wood could be used. I like to use pine, sometimes cedar, rarely ever redwood. It tends to splinter a lot. I hope you enjoyed this and remember to subscribe, like, share this to somebody that wants a good idea of how to make an awesome picnic table that's gonna last. Maybe two, three kids, maybe a whole group of grandkids. Enjoy and have a wonderful day.